1952, the skies of North Korea. Lieutenant Elmer Royce Williams of VF-781 Pacemakers would soon find himself in a life or death struggle against not one or two, but seven MiG-15s in the midst of the Korean War. The engagement would make history even though it would be classified for the next 50 years. Royce Williams was born on April 4, 1925 in South Dakota. From an early age, he had the dream to fly. After December 7, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, Williams enlisted in the U.S. Navy and attended the Naval Academy in Pensacola, Florida. While he missed seeing combat in World War II, he trained to fly the Grumman F-9F, and was eventually assigned to the aircraft carrier Oriskany. Part of Task Force 77, the Oriskany was bound for the Korean Peninsula in support of UN forces fighting the communists aiding North Korea. Royce's steed, the F-9F, was a straight-winged carrier jet built by the famous Grumman Ironworks in Bethpage, New York, the same company that would later build the best fighter ever made, the F-14 Tomcat. Like all previous Grumman Navy fighters like the Wildcat, Hellcat, and Bearcat, the F-9F was named after a cat, the Panther. The sturdy jet was armed with four 20mm cannons and had eight hardpoints for carrying bombs and rockets of all sorts. By 1952, the straight-winged arrangement of the Panther was seen as obsolete, as swept-winged jets like the Soviet MiG-15 were able to reach near the speed of sound, while the Panther was stuck at a max speed of around 500 knots. In fact, the Soviet MiG-15 used by the Communists in the Korean War outclassed the Panther in almost every category. It had larger cannons, a higher top speed, and was just as rugged as the Grumman Cat. When Lt. Williams sorted on November 18, 1952, the cards were already stacked against him. Royce was already on his second sortie of the day with a flight of four when his flight lead, Lt. Elwood, reported mechanical trouble and had to turn back with his wingman. Williams and his remaining wingman, John Middleton, were left alone to continue the combat air patrol. The Oriskany's radar then picked up a flight of unknown aircraft coming from the direction of Vladivostok, and Williams was ordered to intercept them before they came into range of the carrier battle group. Williams and Middleton climbed and spotted seven contrails at approximately 50,000 feet. The only fighters in the communist inventory that could fly that high were MiG-15s. The MiGs dove on the pair of Panthers who had little chance of running away. Even though they were told to not engage, Williams and Middleton were forced to defend themselves. Within seconds, the MiGs and Panthers were at the merge. The 23 and 37mm guns on the MiG-15s banged away, sending baseball-sized tracers at the blue fighters. The Americans fired a burst at an oncoming MiG-15, shaving bits away and setting it off in a smoke trail. Middleton, the young lieutenant junior grade, dove after the MiG, intent on finishing it off. He lined up a shot and was ready to shoot again when... nothing happened. All four of Middleton's cannons had jammed. Williams ordered his wingman to break contact and run for home, leaving him alone against six MiGs circling about him like sharks. The furball swirled as Royce's panther jinked and evaded. In the flurry, the panther had one advantage over the faster MiGs. It could turn inside them. Every time a MiG-15 dove on him, Williams was able to force an overshoot, and eventually he was able to get a shot in. As one of the silver jets crossed in front of him, Royce squeezed the trigger and a burst of American lead slammed into the attacker. The shells buried themselves into the MiG's aluminum skin and detonated, blowing the fighter out of the sky and sending it spiraling into the sea. MiG after MiG continued their slashing attacks on Williams, their own cannons blowing holes into the Panther, but he didn't give up. Moments later, a second MiG fell to the Panther's claws. One MiG-15 tried to head on pass on Williams, who pulled into the oncoming threat and let loose with the last of his ammunition. The deadly shells found their mark, blasting into the MiG's intake and causing the engine to explode. <clears throat> Post-production Falcon here. Uh, I want to make a tiny correction for one of my fuck-ups in this. Uh, so, documentation on the dogfight varies in the order of which the kills happen. However, according to Royce himself, the head-on pass was not his final victory, and according to him, he believes his cannon rounds hit the cockpit, not the intake and where the engine is. Anyway, back to it. Now out of ammo, and the remaining MiG still pursuing him, Royce tried to break into the clouds. Before he could find safe haven in the cloud bank, a cannon burst blew a hole in the Panther's tail, turning the engine and control system into a mess of twisted pipes and cables. Despite the damage, Williams disappeared into the white clouds and into safety. Even though it was Swiss cheesed, Williams was able to nurse his crippled panther back to the boat. 
In the flurry of combat, 263 holes had been punched into the Resilient Cat, which had to be written off and pushed over the edge of the Ariscony. One would think that Williams would be hailed by the Western media as a hero. Not since World War II had the US Navy achieved such a victory in aerial combat, but the whole event was put under wraps. The MiG-15s that had been engaged by VF-781 weren't North Korean or Chinese as had been commonly encountered by US forces in the Korean War. They were Russian. In 1952, there was a fear that if Russians engaging the US became public knowledge, the conflict would intensify and a new war between the US and Soviet Union would be sparked. Unfortunately for Lt. Williams, he couldn't even talk about the engagement for the next 50 years, but he was awarded the Silver Star. It was only in 2002 that the dogfight became common knowledge, and Royce was given public credit for his accomplishment. Royce Williams achieved the rank of captain over the course of his 37 years of service. Not only did he fly in Vietnam, but he also commanded the USS El Dorado, and he ended up retiring in 1980. Just this year, in 2023, Captain Williams was recognized by the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro, and his Silver Star was upgraded to the Navy Cross, the second highest award in the Navy. The 97-year-old now resides in Escondido, California. If you're interested in learning more about Captain Williams' story, check out John Mollison's documentary, Actions Speak Louder Than Metals, The Royce Williams Story. As always, if you enjoyed the artwork done in this video, check out my Wingman Hellions Patreon. It's pretty friggin' good, and there's something there for everyone. I'm Falcon, thanks for watching, and keep that sun at your back, guys.